dudes, how you doing? I hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel and today we'll be discussing the 5-2-3 formation at Sporting Lisbon, of course. We're going to be discussing Ruben Amarantsev tactics, his formation, the players in the team, their instructions, of course, going forward and how you can replicate and recreate the most realistic version of Sporting Lisbon that you will see on TV. I'm hoping that you guys like these uh, sets of instructions and so on. If you can, hit the like button. If you don't enjoy it and you don't agree with what I'm saying, hit the dislike button. Of course, it's your choice at the end of the day. But most importantly, if you are enjoying my videos, especially this one, hit that big red subscribe button, please. That would be absolutely fantastic. So we are going to go through the team really quickly. We've got uh, Gonkelvish on the, the left-hand side, the left wing, of course. He is a fantastic player. I'm so, so, so surprised that... um. A massive European uh, giant hasn't come in for him because somehow Sporting have managed to keep him under under wraps on the down low for the longest time ever. So, you know what? Good for him. I think that, you know, at 24 years old, he's getting to that age now where, you know, maybe he might want to push himself a bit more in another league. Hopefully, <clears throat> Man United can, uh, you know, come in for him. But anyway, we've got him on the left-hand side. We've got Paulinho as the striker. We've got Edwards as the right winger. We've got, I think it's pronounced Braganka. Um, and Morita in the midfield. We've got Santos, Inacio, Coutes, uh, Diamande, and then Estio as the, the right wing back. Then we've got Adan as your goalkeeper. And we've got Jokeres, a uh, former, I think it's Coventry City player, you know? You know I, I, I know ball. Anyway, he, he's made his move to Portugal. We've got Trincao. We've got Huleman. We've got Estio, Israel, Fred, uh, Fresneda, another really good young signing. He's only 18, turning 19 years of age. Um... Fantastic right winger, or right back, I should say, slash full back, wing back. Um, he was linked with Arsenal, of course. So, you know what? Yeah, it's a great signing for them. And then we've got Reese, And then in the reserves, it's not the, the biggest team, to be honest. But we've got St. Juice. We've got Neto. We've got, uh, I'm not going to pronounce this man's name. I'm sorry. Uh, we've got Tanlongo, uh, Nazino, and then, of course, Estevis, or Estevis, or however you pronounce it. I'm, I'm not going to try. And, uh, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, that's the team there going forward. As you can see here with the formation, uh, we've got one goalkeeper, three centre-backs, two central midfielders, two wing-backs, two wingers, and then, of course, one striker. Now, basically, what I did do was I'd move the, the wing-backs uh, as wide as possible, and I did bring the wingers in slightly. So those are the only alterations I have made to the natural lineup um, going forward. Sporting Lisbon's tactical approach in a 5-2-3 formation guided by Ruben Amaron strikes a balance between defensive pressure and versatile offensive tactics. Under Amaron's leadership, Sporting employs a press-off-to-position-loss style, with the front three actively engaging in the opposition's defenders or goalkeeper. This approach forces the opponents to play long balls, enabling Sporting's midfielders and defenders to try and regain possession efficiently. This pressing is initiated whenever the opposition's defenders or the goalkeeper has the ball. This also includes goal kicks. The narrow width setting of 30 contributes a compact defensive structure, ensuring the back three and the midfield duo work together to try and create a challenging environment for the opponents to navigate through the center of the pitch. With a depth setting of 65, Sporting deploys a mid-block strategy that condenses the team vertically. This spatial arrangement keeps the attack, midfield, and the defense closely aligned, preventing opponents from exploiting the space in behind the defensive line. In the build-up play, the balance setting reflects Amaron's preference to versatility. This allows Sporting to adopt a different range of approaches, including long balls into the forward line, quick attacking transitions, counter-attacks, and of course, patient build-up. Choosing forward runs for chance creation accentuates Sporting's offensive intent. The forwards aim to penetrate the opponent's defensive lines, utilizing their movement to exploit the gaps or making runs in behind the defense to capitalize on the space. A width setting of 80 effectively spreads the midfield and encourages the wingbacks to operate in expansive areas on the flanks. This approach not only aids the wide attacking play, but also supports counter-pressing efforts in those wide regions. Setting players in the box to 7 signifies Sporting's ambitions to have multiple attacking options during crosses. The presence of three forwards and occasionally the opposite wingback in the box maximizes the potential to convert chances created from those wide areas. As per always, free kicks and corners are set to four each, maintaining a balanced approach in set-piece situations. In summary, Sporting Lisbon's 5-2-3 tactics under Ruben Amaron blend defensive intensity with offensive adaptability, creating a cohesive strategy that aims to disrupt opponents defensively while maintaining a multifaceted approach to attacking play. So, starting off with the instructions, 
We've got Adan, who is set to just come for crosses. Normally in FIFA, you do want most of your goalkeepers to try and have this on more times than not. You want them to claim those aerial balls being whipped into the box from crosses, corners, free kicks, and so on. You want your goalkeeper to be very early dominant and claim those crosses, relieving pressure on the back line, as per always. And one thing I will say is because you aren't playing a, a very high line, you don't need him to be able to make saves outside the box or run off of his line, claim those balls, and so on. You, you just need him to more or less hold his line, hold his you know, his nerve essentially, um, and, and stay on that line. And then as for your back three, um, Inazio and Diamande, they have the same set of instructions. They have the overlap and the others are set to their base set of instructions. So basically why I've gone with overlap is because when your midfield, they look to try and press up higher up the field, you would want either or of those center backs to try and move up into that midfield spot and somewhat replace them in that situation, filling that gap, filling the space. Um, and it's a very fluid system, whereas one player moves out of position, another player will move into that position. And it's it's a very like, you know, shifty, fluid motion that you will see throughout the game. Um and I quite like that to be honest. Um and then as for and as you can see, uh, uh Inazio, he is set to his set of same set of instructions. And then as for Kutes or Kutz, however you want to pronounce it, he is set to his base set of instructions, except for the fact that he is set to step up. So he is going to be the aggressor in the back line. He's going to look to try and mark the opposition's main striker more times than not, a bit tighter, but you know, put him on edge. Um, throw him off of his game, be a bit more aggressive towards him. And that's what you're going to look for, especially in this uh, situation. Moving slightly higher up the field to our wing backs, they have got the same set of instructions. But basically, join the attack and overlap. You want them creating the width down the, the flanks, of course, either left or right. They will be holding that width. They'll be firing in those crosses. And you want them to operate in those wide areas because there will be a lot of space in those areas for them to to work with to run with of course but more importantly they will be set to stick to position so they're not going to be looking to aggressively assert themselves on the opposition's uh, wingers or fullbacks they will more or less just look to maintain their shape maintain their structure and whip in those dangerous offensive crosses um, and as you can see for the right back situation he has got the same set of instructions as well or oh, sorry the right wing back situation and then as for braganka and Morita, they are set to the same set of instructions as well. Um, basically, you do want them to have a bit more of a fluid motion, like I did mention the fluid approach to this uh, set of instructions. So when they do get forward, your, your center backs will look to fill that area. But more times than not, you want them both playing as a bit more of a box-to-box -box approach. But basically, I have gone with them to both stay on the edge of the box. Um, so if there are a few loose balls, they will look to try and recycle possession, work it out to those wide areas for... Uh, your your wing backs to fire crosses back into the box into those dangerous areas and of course you do want them to try and supply your wingers and of course your striker in certain situations with the ball into those dangerous offensive areas and then both of them are set to stick to position it is vital that they maintain their position in certain moments because that area of the field of course there is only two of them so they can get overloaded especially if the one looks to try and you know do something funny and drift wide so you need them to stick in that central area making sure that they're running the park more times than not and then as you can see for Morita he's got the same set of instructions as well if you would like you can choose either or to just more or less stay back because I did notice that they're, they're, they both tend to just bomb on forward especially if you have a lot of possession they'll look to try and support the striker support the wingers so if you want you can have them uh, both say oh one of them said to to stay back and the other one said to just more of a, a balanced attack so he will look to get forward a bit more but I kind of don't like that because when you watch them play it's either or they can get forward at any moment they can help be involved in the boulder play slightly higher up the field as well uh, so that's why I've gone with more of a balanced attack for the attacking support and then moving on into our forward line, both sets of wingers have got the same set of instructions. So they are set to come back on defense, cut inside, have a balanced support, aggressive interceptions will be on. And that goes for Polina as well. He is also set to aggressive interceptions. And then of course, get into the box. So you do want them in the box when those crosses are fired in from your flanks or from your flank areas, um, your, your wing backs, they'll be firing on those crosses. And then of course, the more bodies in the box, the more chance and opportunity for you to score a goal. But more importantly, it does occupy um, another defender or another opponent um, and does create a lot of space for your main attacker in Polina in this case but uh, the aggressive interceptions now I have set the front line to all have aggressive interceptions on because what they look to do is they, they leave a bit of a gap in behind which is a bit nerve-wracking at times but they look to try and be as aggressive as possible press that um, opposition back line as much as possible forcing them either them or the goalkeeper forcing them to go long down the field and what that does is you essentially just created an overload because you've taken out the back four and the goalkeeper 
and now it's more or less a, a seven or sorry a six v seven situation where you have your two midfielders and your five defenders in that area waiting to win the ball back there of course they're all nice and compact so any loose header they can try and uh, get back and then of course circulate it back into the attacking third um so it does look to try and you know replicate that approach which is why i've gone with the aggressive interceptions for the forward line um supporting runs you do want them to somewhat make more runs in behind stretching that offensive back at the opposition's back line sorry um but at the same time you do want them to sometimes you know just be a bit more supporting come short for the passes interchangeable passes around the corner flicks and so on so that's why i've gone with a more balanced approach and then of course you do want them to cut inside creating space for your your wing backs um because they will operate literally up and down that left or that right side um flank uh, creating a lot of space and crossing opportunities for that forward line and then because your flanks um are occupied by your wing backs bombing up and down they will be bombing up more times than down and they will need defensive support, which is why your wingers will look to support them in those situations. And as you can see here for Marcus Edwards, he's got the same set of instructions for him as well. And then finally, as for Polinia, he is set to stay central, play as a false nine, have aggressive interceptions on, and then come back on defense. Now, basically him playing as a false nine and coming back, he will look to try and plug that hole that does get left um, between the, the attacking line and the midfield because more times not Marita and Braganka will not look to try and be as aggressive with their, their pressing high up the field. And like I say, when your forward line is pressing, it does leave a bit of a gap. So more times than not, your striker will look to try and link the play um, by dropping into that uh, area that gets left vacant quite a bit. So that's why I've gone with him playing as a false nine and of course coming back on defense because he does do a very good job in linking the play. But more importantly, he will be set to stay central. So he will look to occupy that central area, occupy the, the opposition's two or three center backs, um, potentially taking them out of the game and creating space for your wingers going forward and hopefully trying to score you as many goals as can possibly be scored. So yes, my dudes, that is my set of tactics for Ruben Amaron's sporting lisbon team the the five two three formation i hope you have enjoyed this if you have hit the like button like i said please that would be great or if you didn't enjoy it and you hated it and you think my tactics are absolutely doggy um hit the dislike button unsubscribe if you would like but if you are enjoying my videos hit that like button hit the subscribe button and until the next time my dudes i hope you have a damn great day i'm out